seven things I want you to be on the lookout for when you're writing your personal statement draft. And the first comes down to getting started. Action over perfection. It's way too easy to have a blank page or a blank, blank screen with the cursor blinking and not knowing what to do. Obviously, it's hard to talk about yourself when most writing that you do isn't really about you. It's easy to get into that deer in headlights situation where you're just frozen and you're not able to get started. So I want to encourage you, put that aside, free write, just stream of consciousness, let it flow, do it fast, bad, and wrong. Just get started, put something down. You could delete it all afterwards, but take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, even just five minutes, and just start writing something about maybe why you want to go to law school or a statement, a story you want to share. Just get it out there. You can always edit and revise and iterate going forward. But it does not have to be perfect. The first draft won't be perfect. The third draft won't be perfect. And the 10th draft also won't be perfect. Writing is never done. It's never perfect. It's never finished. It's just simply good enough to a point where it's time to move on. So don't be afraid to put something out there. We can always review drafts in sessions like this and make edits for going forward, but you got to at least have something to work with rather than simply having a blank screen or a blank page. Secondly is personal versus professional. I think a lot of folks have, a, they, there's a missed opportunity when it comes to your personal statements where you don't take advantage of that chance to share something personal about yourself. Rather, people just laundry list their resumes rather than sharing something deep about themselves that only they could share. So your resume is your resume. Leave that there. Use the personal statement to go deeper. Share something personal about yourself, that's something that they couldn't get elsewhere. And using the first person like I, me, my, mine, all of that is totally fine. This is a personal statement. Don't feel the need to be overly professional or overly objective. This is you that we're talking about is a personal statement, not a professional statement of purpose. So you can get personal and you should. Another distinction is one thing versus everything. And I've discussed this with a few of you already. One thing and go deep, not trying to cover everything on the surface level. You've got about two pages double spaced. You can't summarize your entire life in those two pages. So don't try to. If you've got 10 different things you want to share, that's great. You're not going to have space to share all 10, unfortunately. You can summarize them in your resume, but your personal statement should cover one of those in depth. Then maybe you can cover another one in a diversity statement, another one in an optional essay. Maybe other stories will come through in your letters of rec, but you can't cover everything in the personal statement. And if you try to cover it all, you're going to end up not saying very much at all, and it won't be as compelling in the end. Another distinction is self versus others. Talk about yourself. It should be focused on you. A lot of people submitted drafts to me that covered other people, how they admire somebody else, how they had an experience of somebody else. It could be a family member. It could be somebody you encountered once in your life, but they really made an impression on you. And that's great. Role models are important. Stories are important, but bring it back to yourself. Only use the other person as a jumping off point. Bring it back to you and the insights and takeaways you got from that interaction or that experience of somebody else. So it should be maybe 5% them or 10% them, the rest all about you bringing it back to you. Another distinction is extraordinary versus the everyday. A lot of people are afraid to offend. They're afraid to get personal. They end up being boring. Don't be vanilla about this. Think rainbows and unicorns. You want to be unique. You want to show what a special, unique individual you are. You want to stand out. And that runs the risk of being polarizing sometimes. So it is a fine line. But again, I find two people err on the side of being bland over being outstanding. So you want to think, you want to go from the perspective of most people think X about me, but actually why? So for example, if I were to write one, I might talk about how most people think that when you're a minor internet celebrity focused on the LSAT, you've got tons of adulation all the time. You're feeling great all the time. You've got thousands of followers and you're basking in all of that. Maybe you think that, I don't know. But I would have thought that having 5,000 followers or whatever would make a big difference. It turns out that the more successful you, be can, you become, the more lonely you get sometimes because it's just numbers on a screen. It's not real interactions. And so I could write a statement simply about that, what most people don't know about me. 
I could go in that direction. I could talk about being suspended from college for, few, for a few years. I could talk about how most people think an LSAT instructor is totally logical, but in reality, I've gotten into a lot of woo-woo stuff that most people would think is crazy. That's the stuff underneath the surface. It's personal and you wouldn't expect it. So it stands out for that reason. And if you want to go more in that direction, I have these forums I've been running every couple of weeks or so where we share stuff like this that's underneath the surface. And if you talk about that, you know, setting like that, it could actually help you bring out your personal statement topic when you wouldn't have thought to talk about that otherwise or even felt safe talking about that otherwise. And so I would encourage you, come to the forum sessions. I'm running on the end of this month, and that could be a good place for you to unpack more of the personal and get deeper underneath the surface. Another distinction is past versus future. A lot of people talk about what they will do, tying it back to why law school in particular, when in reality, that's all theoretical. It hasn't happened yet. And so all the promises you can make about your future career success don't mean a whole lot if you don't have the experience to back that up. And of course, your, your, your goals may change over time in law school. So I would suggest that you don't focus on the future. You don't focus on why law school. You can mention it, but what's going to be a lot more real to them is what you've done up to this point. And again, not laundry listing the resume. You'll have space for that. But instead, talk about one particular thing you've done, one experience you've had, and that will serve as your evidence, as your reason why law school and why perhaps a particular career goal. And finally, anti-fragile versus fragile. Anti-fragility versus fragility. Don't excuse things that have happened to you. Simply explain. This should not be a pity party. Don't try to justify everything. It comes off as weak. It comes off as complaints. Turn your weaknesses and failures into strengths. Show what you've learned from the experiences and end on a positive note. It's okay that bad things happen to you if they did. And you can mention that, but show the post-traumatic growth that comes out of that experience. Don't leave it on a sour note or blaming others because that just leaves a, a bad taste in people's mouths and you want them to walk away feeling good about you. You want them to walk away liking you.